Hello friends, now in this video we are going to discuss about cholinergic drugs. So cholinergic drugs is divided into two groups, directly, directly acting cholinergic drugs and indirectly acting cholinergic drugs. So directly acting cholinergic drugs directly bind with your acetylcholine receptors whereas indirectly acting cholinergic drugs inhibit the cholinesterase enzyme okay that is the acetylcholinesterase so this group of enzyme will inhibit acetylcholinesterase enzyme and thus increases cholinergic activity and this group of drug directly bind to the acetylcholine receptors and stimulate it now directly and we know acetylcholine receptor is of two types muscarinic receptor and nicotinic receptor so first we will discussing about muscarinic receptor drugs okay those drugs those directly acting drug which is responsible for the stimulation of muscarinic receptor so muscarinic receptor is stimulating drugs are again divided into two that is a cholinester or alkaloid so in cholinester there are four drugs acetylcholine methacholine carbacol and bethenicol acetylcholine can stimulate both muscarinic as well as nicotinic methacholine it is mainly responsible for muscarinic carbacol m plus n both means muscarinic and nicotinic both whereas bethenicol for muscarinic receptor whereas alkaloid are muscarine and pilocarpine clear now first we will discuss about acetylcholine now acetylcholine is not used generally as a drug because of its very short t half why it's t half, t half is short we have discussed earlier in previous video because of the presence of butyl esterase butyl esterase is present in blood okay and it can destroy this drug acetylcholine so it is not used generally because of the less t half as well as it has diffused activity acetylcholine has diffused activity because we have seen it can stimulate both muscarinic and nicotinic receptors then it can cross biological membrane easily because it is charged clear so these are the three reasons why we do not use acetylcholine as a drug now coming to the bethenicol so bethenicol mainly acting on muscarinic receptor as we have discussed here now bethenicol you remember one sentence bethenicol it activate boil and bladder movement okay b for bethenicol b for boil and b for bladder so it is mainly responsible for activation of git and urinary bladder movement okay so it is mainly responsible for activation of git and urinary bladder movement by activating the receptors clear acetylcholine can also estimate but we do not use acetylcholine because of the these reasons now in bethenicol acetyl is replaced by caramate and methyl okay in bethenicol acetyl group is replaced by means in acetylcholine is modified to form your bethenicol okay in acetylcholine if you remove acetyl group and add carbamate and methyl group okay then it will form bethenicol and its t half will increase because there will be no acetyl group so acetylcholine stress will not act here okay now this drug is given in the patient having non obstructive urinary retention okay bethenicol is given into patient which have non obstructive urinary retention clear or it can also given in post operative urinary retention post partum urinary retention chronic hypotonic bladder so these are the conditions in which you can give bethenicol clear now post operative a dynamic ileus or atonic asthma clear but be careful that the patient don't have obstruction in git and urinary bladder you can give this drug that is bethenicol okay for increasing the urinary sorry the bladder movement or git movement but be sure that the patient have no obstruction in git and urinary bladder clear it is also given in congenital megacolon clear so these are the conditions in which this bethenicol drug is administered now side effects of the bethenicol it may cause generalized action of the cholinergic system it is the side effect now coming to the contraindicated in the bethenicol so it should not be given peptic ulcer because muscarinic stimulation can increase h plus secretion it should be not given in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease because it can cause bronchoconstriction because of the stimulation of muscarinic receptors it should not be given in ischemic heart disease associated with coronary artery blockage clear and it should also be not given in parkinson disease as well as hyperthyroidism okay 
so these are the contraindicated diseases in which that bethenicol should not be given because these conditions can be worsened by giving that drug that is bethenicol clear now the next drug is your carbacol so it can stimulate both muscarinic as well as nicotinic receptor in this carbamate group is present but not methyl group methyl group is absent but carbamate carbamate group is present it is generally not used okay it is used to reduce intraocular pressure in glaucoma patient when first line of drug is not acting not affecting that is pilocarpine pilocarpine is the first line of drug for reducing intraocular pressure that is in the glaucoma patient okay glaucoma patient but carbacol is given if this drug is not working and generally this is not used so much the next one is methacholine it is used to check hyper reactivity of the bronchial tree okay and it it causes bronchial constriction because of the stimulation of muscarinic receptor it can cause bronchial constriction and it is used to check hyper reactivity of bronchial tree clear now pilocarpine pilocarpine is used mainly in the patient with glaucoma clear and we have discussed glaucoma in a separate video okay so we are not going to discuss here so pilocarpine is used in patient with glaucoma topically clear now coming to the indirectly acting drug so indirect acting drug can be divided again into two group reversible and irreversible reversible means enzyme will be recovered after some time irreversible means those enzyme which will be completely destroyed okay inhibited through which it binds if that drug if irreversible indirecting acting drugs bind to the acetylcholine esterase enzyme then it will lead to the destruction of that acetylcholine esterase enzyme okay so this is known as irreversible and this is known as reversible because enzyme will be recovered after some time clear so first indirectly acting drug is work, working on acetylcholine stages okay now now we will first focus on reversible anticholine stages so the first one is physostigmine the second one is neostigmine pyridostigmine and hydrophonium so physostigmine is an example of alkyl white which is of tertiary amine nature and because of its tertiary amine nature it is less polar and it can cross blood brain barrier clear while neostigmine pyridostigmine and hydrophonium they all are synthetic drug and quaternary amines so it is more polar so it will not cross blood brain barrier easily clear now one more important point about physostigmine and neostigmine that they can form labile covalent bond for 1 to 2 hours clear while hydrophonium it is short effective drug only action is 10 to 20 minutes we will discuss later on in detail about all of these three drugs now irreversible drugs have alkyl group which is attached to it okay irreversible drugs having one alkyl group attached to it if that alkyl group is removed then the enzyme can't be recovered we are talking about irreversible drugs clear in irreversible drugs we cannot recover enzyme easily okay but until and unless alkyl group is not removed from those irreversible drugs until and unless alkyl group is not removed from those irreversible drugs enzyme can be recovered but if alkyl group is removed then the enzyme can be recovered usually alkyl group is detached after some time of binding because such this is suppose this is a style coenzyme stage enzyme and one irreversible drug comes and bind with the style coenzyme stage enzyme and this drug has a special alkyl group okay this drug has a special alkyl group if this alkyl group will persist then we can recover this enzyme by giving antidote or like this but this if this alkyl group is detached from this drug then we cannot recover this enzyme and this is alkyl group detaches after binding okay within very short period clear until alkyl group is present we can remove those drugs by giving antidote okay such as pralidoxamine okay pralidoxamine Peridoxin is one of the antidote by which we can recover the drug. If alkyl group is detached, we cannot, and this is known as aging. If alkyl group is detached, then we cannot recover that enzyme, and this is known as aging. Clear? Now, acetylcholine can deposit mainly at foresight, as we have discussed. They are the cholinergic system, CNS, okay, sympathetic and parasympathetic ganglia, neuroeffector junction, and neurobuscular junction. So these are the these are the four regions where acetylcholine can deposit. Now. The first drug is your physostigmine. So physostigmine also stimulates GIT and urinary bladder. Okay, means it is increasing motility of GIT as well as urinary bladder. It can be given in glaucoma and generally it is given with pilocarpine. Okay, 
in glaucoma generally it is given with pilocarpine we have discussed about pilocarpine physiotic mean also responsible for GIT and renal bladder stimula stimulation because, but this is a type, type, type of irreversible enzyme sorry irreversible drug which is targeting a style coding stages clear we have discussed bethanicol that was example of reversible drug now overdose of atropine phenothiazines tricyclic depressants okay okay so physostic is also administered when there is overdose of atropine or phenothiazines or tricyclic depressants because they are the examples of anticholinergic drugs anticholinergic okay now the side effects of isostigmine that it can lead to CNS overstimulation because it can cross CNS as we have discussed blood brain barrier it can also cause paralysis and it can also cause collapse of cardiovascular system due to overstimulation if there is overstimulation now coming to the neostigmine so neostigmine is new no 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 to CNS it does not go to CNS it is less lipid soluble so less dissolved okay it is le less lipid soluble so it is less dissolving fat and most of the ganglia most of the ganglia is embedded into fat so less stimulation of ganglia in comparison with physostigmine okay physostigmine can stimulate more but neostigmine can stimulate ganglia less in compared to physostigmine because neostigmine is more polar in compared to physostigmine and we know ganglia is mainly ganglia is mainly embedded in fats at neuromuscular junction it is more better than physostigmine because it can also also stimulates cholinergic receptor important point at neuromuscular junction this drug is performing better than physostigmine because it can stimulate cholinergic receptors along with anticholinergic activity but at the ganglia level it is less effective than physostigmine clear now it is also used in myasthenia gravis very effectively okay this drug is used in myasthenia gravis now see here this is your muscle and here it is a receptor muscarinic receptor style choline is coming from there there okay and in myasthenia gravis what happens antibodies forms against these receptors okay it is against this receptor antibodies get formed clear and these receptors are present on postsynaptic membrane mind it this receptor are present on postsynaptic membrane and if antibodies are formed against the receptor which is present at the postsynaptic membrane and leads to the weakness that is known as myasthenia gravis but some cases may be like this this is your presynaptic membrane from which a style choline will be released and this calcium channel which is which is responsible for calcium influx then exocytosis so if antibodies will form against the calcium channel okay then it will be known as Eaton's lambert syndrome antibodies is again against your presynaptic receptors or channels are present at presynaptic membrane okay so then Eaton's lambert syndrome clear Antibodies against calcium channel, then less release of acylcholine will be there, and this is known as Eaton Lambert syndrome. Neostigmine can act in both situations, okay, can also cause boil and bladder movement. It can also cause boil and bladder movement. Side effects is general stimulation of cholinergic system in our body. The next one is pyros pyrostigmine or ambinomium, okay, pyrostigmine or ambinomium. Both have longer effects in compared with physostigmine and neostigmine one important point that is whether it is pyridostigmine or ambinomium both have longer effects clear now moving to the next that is your hydrophonium hydrophonium drug is related to tensilon test okay hydrophonium is for tensilon test it helps in diagnosis of myasthenia gravis because of its low action time okay its action time is only 10 to 20 minutes so we can diagnose myasthenia gravis by giving this drug if this drug is given into a patient which in which we suspect of myasthenia gravis and if the condition is somewhat improved due to giving of hydrophonium then we can diagnose that that patient have myasthenia gravis okay and its action is a very low time so if any adverse effect will come then it is only for some time very short period now it also helps to differentiate between two things that is myasthenia gravis crisis as well as cholinergic crisis okay and both myasthenia gravis crisis as well as cholinergic crisis causes weakness muscular weakness so we have to differentiate between myasthenia gravis crisis and cholinergic crisis and for this differentiation we can use this drug erophonium clear now 
myasthenia gravis crisis is increased in antibody formation against receptor so we need to increase doses of anticholine stress this both condition are seen in myasthenia gravis patient who is undergoing with treatment of the myasthenia gravis but during treatment suppose if there is increase in antibody formation against receptor then we need to increase doses of anticholine stresses clear now the second is cholinergic crisis suppose if there is decrease in antibody formation then there will be more activation of receptor by acetylcholine and over stimulation also cause also causes weakness so we need to decrease dose okay of anticholine stresses in this we need to decrease anticholine stresses dose in this we have to increase so we have to differentiate in between these two which of the cases seen in patients so for differentiation we can again use hydrophonium how see here so we need so patient is given hydrophonium if weakness decreases then that was case of the myasthenia gravis crisis if after giving this drug if weakness decreases then this case if weakness increases then this case that is your cholinergic crisis clear